You're with Hugo Soteno, also known as The Boss, who will be fighting on June 18th. Talk to us about the fight and the event. Um, we'll be fighting on the Fanfara undercard June 18th over at the Chicago, Illinois Pavilion. Uh, I believe it will be the co-main event on uh, NBC uh, by PVC. And uh, the guy, he's 22-0, uh, I believe you pronounced his name, Micah Sulecki. He's a Polish guy. He's had uh, three fights out here and then the rest of them have been in Poland. But uh, tough dude, he's about six foot, about my size, uh, middleweight. And he comes to fight, man. So it should be a good one, I believe, from here. I mean, one of us will, will jump up. Right. But, you know, hopefully it's it'll you. be me. <laughs> Not too long ago, maybe three, four fights ago, you were still fighting as a junior middleweight. You are now a full-fledged middleweight. You knocked out James De La Rosa in five rounds. It took middleweight prospect Jason Quigley ten rounds. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts on Jason Quigley and that knockout you scored against a very experienced fighter in De La Rosa? Uh, you know what? Honestly, I this is the only fight that I've seen of Jason Quigley and. I honestly thought it was a little closer than than what the refs or the officials called it, but you know, it is what it is. Um, they have a different view. I have a different perspective from what I saw on camera. Um, but I mean, it's good for him. It's a good, great victory for him. You know what I mean? Uh, so I applaud the man. You know, it's, it's for being so young and and having a victory like that so early in your career. It's it's big. So congratulations to just quick. I'm trying to play matchmaker here. <laughs> Now let's talk about another fighter. A fighter, I don't want to say you despise or that you hate or have a huge dislike for, but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Let's talk about that rematch. Yeah, Who's I, the man? Who's the man? The guy's name is Julian Williams that you're talking about. No, I don't, hate, I don't hate him. You know, like, he's still doing his thing at 154 and I'm at 160 now. But, you know, hopefully along the future, you know, there is a rematch. I would love a rematch. And what, uh, what happened in that fight? So, you know, uh, we were fighting. He, was, he beat me early on. And, uh... In the fourth round, there was a clash of heads, and so I got a cut over my eye. And it's not that the cut bothered me, it's that he hit me into the eye. So when the ref called me over and he's like, oh, or the doctor called me over and he's like, how many fingers do I have up? And apparently I said the wrong number, and so he stopped the fight. He's like, this, this kid can't see out of his eye. And so since I didn't piss or moan, everyone's all like, oh, he quit. You know what I mean? He quit, he quit. And what it is is that I have enough experience to know that once a ref stops the fight, whether you piss or moan, he's not going to let the fight keep going just because you say you're okay. It's what exactly. they think, you know, it's not your opinion. Because us, we'll die, we'll die in, yeah. uh, in the ring, you Can't know what I mean? That. And so right after Julian Williams, I fought Angel Asuna, and a lot of people didn't get to see that fight. Unfortunately, it wasn't televised, and it was an all-out war. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was down on the cards, the guy dropped me, officially. Um, and I was down the first seven rounds. I came back and knocked the guy out in the tent. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, Angel Suna went into a coma after that fight, but it was a balls oh, out wow. war. You know what I mean? He's not able, to, unfortunately, he's not able to box anymore. And but he's you know alive. I mean? And he's alive. He pushed through the toughest fight of his career or of his life. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And now he's doing a lot better. You know, he's able to walk now. And a lot of people don't know about that fight, so they don't know how, many, how much balls I have. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just go back to that, oh, he quit with the Julian Williams fight. Right. But you know, it is what it is. And hopefully down the future, we get another big title fight. You know what I mean? I feel, I mean, I, I feel like everything happens for a reason. And that fight happened to the way it did so we can have a bigger fight in the future. I think it also just shows how humble and how much you care about your opponents after the fight. Now, I have had this conversation with several other boxing experts because I kind of missed the fight against you and Julian Williams. Some say that Julian Williams was could have been on his way to winning the fight. Um, however, now that they've seen you progress, now that they've seen you at a higher weight division that perhaps you were drained, they don't think that uh, Julian Williams could win this fight. Perhaps it's 50-50. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, he was he was on his way. I, I mean, he was winning the first three rounds. And I believe, you know, it's you weather the storm against him. But exactly. that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? So it's not how you start a fight. It's how you finish it. Like the fight that I had after that, the one I was just recently yes. talking about. I was down on all cards. And if I would have given up, I mean, I would have lost the fight. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. You know what exactly. I mean? So... It's how you all in how you finish a fight, how clutch you go. So, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, I would think it'd be a great fight. Yeah. I would say it's 50 50. He's a strong kid. I'm a strong kid. So, I mean, let's do it in the future. Now, you've shown uh, tremendous talent, a lot of poise. Uh, you show the ring IQ. When I saw you sparring against Peter Quillen, 
you weren't just doing well for yourself. You were beating up the guy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great work. Uh, I've been working for, with Peter for a while, and uh, he's another great middleweight, a, a, a two-time world champion, I believe. Um, and you know, it's been great work sparring with all these guys: uh, Sergio Martinez, Peter Quinlan, Canelo, Triple G. All these guys have been have given me all that ring IQ, you know what I mean? I feel like I've gotten so much experience just being able to work with these guys that by the time I get there, you know, it's it's showing. So, you know, it's been an awesome experience and I couldn't ask for more. What are your thoughts on Canelo Alvarez dropping the WBC belt? Uh, according to him and his team, they need to further negotiate terms for a Gennady Golovkin bout. Uh, unfortunately, I think we all know this fight will not be happening until May. Do you think Canelo Alvarez will be fighting David Lemieux? And what are your thoughts on him dropping the WBC strap? Uh, you know, it's like Oscar De La Hoya said when he fought, uh, when Canelo fought Cotto. Uh, Cotto refused to pay the the, the, the sanctioning fee and he vacated the title and Oscar said it's a disgrace to boxing so I mean it's the same thing with Canelo it's yeah. a disgrace to boxing he didn't say that about Canelo right but he said <laughs> but he said it about Cotto good point <laughs> you know what I mean and so you know I feel like it's a disgrace because like De La Hoya said every kid dreams of getting a middle or middle middleweight title and especially the WBC so I mean I think it's a disgrace but you know I I don't know what uh, his management wants right. to do or whatever, but uh, I feel like they've had the time to negotiate, you know, about like that because they've been talking about it since after the Cotto fight, you know. So I mean, whatever they choose to do, I guess it's it's really up to them. But right. I feel like it would be a great fight. Who do you have winning in that fight? Because you have Canelo Alvarez, who has a great resume. However, that resume reflects in the 154-pound division. You have Gennady Golovkin, who has, <laughs> and in the 155 uh, created, uh, fabricated division, 155-pound <laughs> fabricated division, that's funny. You also have Gennady Golovkin, who has the world-class amateur background, but his resume isn't as strong. But when you use your boxing eyes and study the fight game, you can clearly see who is the better fighter. At least in my estimation, it's Triple G. Well, I mean, I can tell you first off by experience because it's sparring both the guys. So I helped Canelo get ready for Trout, and I helped Triple G get ready for uh, pretty fight Rubio. So, I mean, they were both recent fights or somewhat recent. Um, and me personally, uh, just being in front of them with uh, both of them, I feel like Triple G is more elusive. Just as far as him being in front of you, he's a little more crafty. He uses a lot more angles and uh, Canelo is a little more predictable. But I don't count Canelo out because he has tremendous power. And Triple G is heavy handed with both his hands, but you can't count Canelo out. Right. And he's been improving since the Mayweather fight, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I believe it's a good fight. Do you, be, do, you, do you honestly believe that you got the full-fledged power of Gennady Golovkin? Because from what I hear from his trainers, and this is from his trainers, that he tries to take it easy on his opponents, tries not to go upstairs too much. Uh -huh. He'll go to the arms, he'll go to the body, and if it's somebody very young, he takes it easy on them. What do you think? What, were your, what, were your, what is your experience with Gennady Golovkin? Regardless, he has heavy hands, you know what I mean? So even just by, by instinct, natural instinct, he's going to be letting him go. I'm not saying he's maybe not throwing his hardest, but I mean, it's enough to, you know, where he's there. And I mean, it's, it's, it's he's pretty heavy handed. <laughs> yeah, he's very heavy handed. And with 10 ounce gloves, I mean, it's different. Right, right. Yeah, so, I mean, but the, the as far as, like I said, elusiveness, it's all there. He's very, he's a lot faster than what people expect. His footwork is great, always keeps himself balanced. So, I mean, he's, he's a pretty good fighter, or a great <laughs> fighter. What are your thoughts on a, a proposed bout, Danny Jacobs, Daniel Jacobs versus Gennady Golovkin? Um, I say Gennady Golovkin. Yeah, he's just too smart. He's too smart. Yeah, he's, he breaks down his opponents very well, and uh, I don't know. We've seen uh, Daniel Jacobs succumb to that, you know, that type yeah, of that's true. Uh, pressure. That's true. So I, I, I would go with Triple G on that one. For some of the UK fight fans out there that are unfamiliar with Hugo Satano, walk us through your style. What is your style like? I actually have a, a few um, UK fans. So nice. shout out to all the UK fans. They uh, get to me on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Uh, you know, for my style, um, I would say I'm a slick, slick boxer. I fight lefty and righty. I know how to fight on the inside pretty well. Um, You're a good counter puncher. Okay, great counter. I, I try to counter punch as well. Um, so I'm a little bit of everything. 
you'll see when I fight, I, I usually try to do a little bit of everything and, uh, you know, it works out for me. I always try to give a different look. And how were you introduced to the sport of boxing? Um, how did this come to fruition? When I started boxing, I was probably, I first started when I was seven years old, but before that, you know, I was like two or three. I used to watch all the fights with my dad, the like Tuesday night fights, Friday night oh, fights, man. and all that stuff. Remember that? Yeah. So I used to watch all that with my dad, and and um, you go back, buddy. Yeah, man. It's been a long time. And so he would take me. You know, we'd be at the laundry mat, and my dad would be playing around with me, like we were doing the pads and stuff. So finally, when I turned seven, we went to a boxing gym, and I just head over heels for the sport, man. And ever since then, I've never stopped, and it's gotten me this far. You know, so you know that's. And he used to box when he was younger. Yeah. Him and his brothers. And uncles, you know, I have all those guys used to box, yeah. so I feel like it's in my blood. Well, I can tell you this much, the middleweight division, the 160-pound division is getting very exciting. We have a lot of great champions, a lot of great contenders, and as we can see, a lot of great prospects. I'm excited. You're excited. Fight fans around the world should be excited. Thank you, Hugo, the boss of Tenno. We look forward to your next fight. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.